Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is a Raid Shadow Legends video. Apologies, I've got like the post Gamescom flu or cold or whatever thing going on, so my voice is croaky as hell. But uh, I just wanted to talk in this video about something which I think is a growing problem in Raid, and I just I just wanted to put it out there because it's really warping people's perception of different events and different stuff that's going on. And ultimately, it comes back to power creep. The, the amount of power creep that's happened in Raid in the last, I guess, 18 months has been pretty extreme. But what this is meaning is that any new champions that come into the game are, are kind of being now compared to the absolute top tier champions in the game. Also, it means that any, any kind of content or tips or stuff like that, which the creators do, they're basically having to try and water, back, uh, water down their content to a level which... I guess um tries to hit the majority of a player base or they just go with full beans this is my best team but then you've got stuff like mythical champions which are just irrelevant to most people so there's this real kind of like challenge of power creep and i guess champion pool which i think raid are struggling to address and one of the biggest reasons why i think this is a massive problem actually right now is one of the best ways that raid have kept people engaged in their content over all of this time, over five and a bit years, is actually their fusion model. We love to hate the fusion model, but what it really does is anyone who's remotely active or do any sort of FOMO um, in this game, they pretty much work hard and try and collect fusion champions. Those legendaries once a month, every single month since I've been playing this game, we've had the opportunity to earn a legendary. That's always been like the go-to for activity, um, you know, coming back to the game on a daily basis, making sure you keep your resources high, potentially spending for people that spend, like all of those things. One of the kind of like real things that you wrap your head around is that they're focused around fusions. Okay, so I, I just put out a video yesterday about Thor coming into the game. Now, I'm a massive Marvel fan. I'm also a massive mythology fan. And, you know, Thor is a great character, right? So when we see a fusion like Thor coming in, uh, is this the right, this is just his visual, we look at his kit and we want it to be something absolutely amazing, okay? That's what we want because if we're going to do a fusion, if we're going to put the time in, then we need it to be a standout champion for us to put, put against our efforts. And that, that triggers two things. Firstly, if it's not up there with the big boys, then we're like, well, is it worth our time? But secondly, if it is up there with the big boys, then it creates the next level of power creep, right? So that it's this double-edged sword, which is really difficult to manage for raid. Now, if I think of some of the champions that have really come in, and I didn't get this one on my main, but completely changed the game in terms of power creep. And these were fusions, by the way. Armands completely changed the game. You've got champions like Newt, basically made a lot of bosses, you know, trivial especially if someone gets two of this fella and you know these these type of champions coming in well this is now the new normal in terms of what we want for a fusion right so if they're not coming in with this level of power then it's almost like well this is a skip fusion and if someone is skipping multiple fusions in a row chances are they will actually churn out of raid shadow legends they will stop playing the game there's a good chance of that because they're not having that kind of reminder to come back and be active um, so, as I say, love it or hate it, the fusion model has been one of the ways that Raid has kept their players for so long. I mean, another thing, in terms of just the health of the game and, and why this is a massive problem, like we've got this summoning event on right now. I do not own Armal, Armands, as you just saw, and I do not own Nekmothar, who's actually one of my most wanted non-void, non-mythical champions. But you notice I'm throwing words in there now. Whereas it used to be, I'd just say this is one of my most wanted legendaries. Um, and it would be really good for one of my Hydra teams. But now I'm like, well, hold on. Is he that great compared to the other stuff that starts to come out? And actually, I, I still would like Nekmo, by the way. I think he would be great, especially because I've got Teox. And, um, and I'm still considering whether I pull shards. But then I also know that Freya event is coming up. And I'm probably going to need shards for that. And there's this power creep in terms of champs nowadays that... You're kind of thinking, well, how valuable is he? 
you know, compared to picking up the void legendaries that are coming through, compared to picking up the mythicals now that exist in the game. And this is kind of like the new normal. So I was thinking about it in my head. I was like, well, how do Raid get past this, this potential risk to their game that fusions become a fairly obsolete thing unless they bring out absolutely like god tier fusions? Notice I've not picked up a few of the last fusions. I was just like, I don't know if I'd ever use this guy. Certainly in the current state of the game, he was not that relevant to me. If they brought out a bunch of hounds that were fun, then maybe he becomes relevant to me. But you know, I was doing other stuff at the time. I've got a lot of other things going on. So I decided not to pick him up. But imagine if Thor came into the game now, but he was a mythical level of champion. I, I, I really feel like that's kind of where they need to go with fusions to make them relevant again. Because mythical is like the new void legendary. Or, or I guess... Or I guess maybe they need to be Void Legendary level because Mythical is the new Void Legendary, right? Epics are almost like, I don't know, it's, it's, it's like, are they even super relevant for Endgame? I guess you could do anything in the game with Epics, but when you start to get champions like, you know, the, the Unity dudes who, who just got like crazy stuff going on, you've got some of the Void Legendaries that have got crazy stuff going on. Obviously, the Mythicals have got crazy stuff going on. You just get to this point where you're like, you know, what what do we need to see from a guaranteed fusion to really be excited about it? And if we are really excited about it, like this fella, it probably means they're just plain broken for the game. You know, it probably just means they're plain broken. Like we're comparing Thor right now to champions that are in the game. So we're like, well, he's not as good as a Trunda for damage for Hydra. So probably, um, you know, I might not use him there. And he, he doesn't bring any enemy max HP. So... You know, if you look at almost every team for every boss, a lot of them are focused around enemy max HP. So that's a miss. So if we just want him to be a nuker, it's like, well, you know, what's that benchmark for nukers? Well, it's champions that ignore defense or ignore stone skin or, you know, all of these different metrics that we're looking at. And you can't bring every champion into the game with those type of skills. You know, we're at the point now, we're at like, what, 500, 6, 7, 8, I'd say we're about 900 champions in this game right now. 900. And to keep bringing out interesting ones, to keep bringing out ones that people will want to go and get, is a real challenge for Raid. It's a real challenge. And I do think the only way that they really get there now is if, you know, the new fusion model basically turns into mythicals. And then you've got the question of, well, if that was going to be the way, what, what do you need to fuse into mythicals? Is it legendaries? Because if it is, then hell, they're not going to give us a bunch of legendaries to fuse into a myth mythical, which means that they probably just have to be, you know, like shard-based fusions, which I guess is fine. But um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just really not sure where they go next with this to keep that kind of like hype feeling of once a month there's something you can go out and get, providing you manage your resources well. And it's, it's kind of like relevant in today's game. There's a lot of players that are long-term players now. I did a poll uh, a couple of months ago, and in terms of my viewership at least, you know, there's a good 50% that have played for more than a couple of years. So Raid has actually retained players pretty well. But I do think that if you lose the fusion model, which is a big part of their retention model, then you know, potentially you struggle to retain those players. You know, we've had champions like Nartis coming in as a guaranteed alongside a cool fusion. This type of thing is actually really good. But again, it's, it's only for people that can really knuckle down and save resources or spend, basically. And as I say, like anyone that comes in, we're basically comparing them to you know, the likes of someone like a Georgid. Uh, okay, if this is a Nuka, well, I need it to do stuff like ignore stone skin, absolutely lay the, the chaos, have a chance to ignore defense. If it's not doing all those things, then it's like, well, where do they fit in the meta? So I guess we'll see. I'm going to play around with Thor, obviously, as he comes out. But it was just on my mind. I was like, it, it feels like it's a real serious potential issue in the game. And I don't really know how they fix it unless, unless they just continue on the power creep curve, but they let everyone come along for the ride. In, and in which case, you know, basically epics become the old rares, legendaries become the old epics, and mythicals become the new legendaries. Um, Anyway, that's it for today. Have yourself a good weekend and I'll see you soon.